Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306, back with another video. Apologies if it sounds kind of weird. I have the uh, the camera, which is actually a phone, set up on like this gooseneck thing on a table next to another table because this is going to be a big thing that I am I'm doing. So yeah, uh, you might be able to see. Um, it says Vivo, Vivor, Vivor, uh, CNC engraving machine because I found one of these cheap uh, 3018 desktop CNC kind of machines for an unbelievable price for under 130. It was like 127 or something, which is insane. So yeah, um, we're gonna make do with the setup that we got. Uh, this is kind of the only large open table space I got. So anywho, uh, this is it and I already cut it. I have not opened it yet though. So, uh, we have a manual. Ah, okay, yeah. Has all the parts. There you go. Oops, sorry. Yeah, parts, assembly, instructions, which seem very dense, if I'm being honest. And also, they need to change their uh, color printer ink cartridge. Uh, the inkjet printing sort of looks a little bit off color <laughs> but yeah it's good enough it'll probably get the job done wow this is like super dense it's only like 12 pages but uh double-sided so yeah that's at least something that i can work off of and we have all our like linear rails and everything in this one side uh the lead screws we have the bed itself which, as its name implies, the work area is uh, 180 millimeters by 300 millimeters. And this be a pretty chunky boy. A little bit dirty. Looks like, uh, yeah, there's some schmutz there. But anyway, that's on the underside. I guess this is the top side. Uh, or maybe vice versa. Anywho, yeah, uh, probably good enough. Um, so there's that. Everything uses a uh, V-slot extrusion, so yeah, these are all kind of the parts of the frame and the bed and stuff. Underneath that, just shift this over, we have everything else. <laughs> it comes with a, I guess a micro SD, hopefully, because um, it's supposed to come with a bunch of, oh no, that's just a reader. It has a micro SD card reader because this has a built-in controller thingy like a, an offline controller a pendant and here's the uh, USB with all the important stuff for like the uh, the software side we have everything in a bunch of little bags we have our tool bag with our spanners and our allen keys and everything uh, yeah USB cable if you wanted to run it in a online mode the power brick is pretty beefy it is 24 volts at 5 amps and yeah that we have the actual motor head itself with a uh, like a collet and this is uh, air cooled and yeah looks like this is injection molded I looked at uh, my friend has one of these and his looks like it was actually 3d printed uh, but this definitely is injection molded and already leaking oil onto my hands from <laughs> the bearings uh, but yeah that should be at least better I think being uh, injection molded we have our steppers here, the uh, bits, these are, I think they're similar to like a high density plastic foam, like a palm or something like that. But yeah, these are the side pieces. We have uh, pillow blocks for, it looks like for the, uh, for the uh, linear bearings, we have something or other, more aluminum extrusions, bunch of screws and Finally, last but not least, looks like they do come with a set of 10 um, uh, bits. So five of them are like the V bits and it uh, looks like the rest are four flute uh, like end mill bits. So I'm not too keen on the, uh, the terminology for CNC and whatnot. So this will be a learning experience for me. Let's just go through quickly and try to assemble this. So I'm going to do this on on speed dial so to speak uh, because I don't want you guys to have to watch me faff around with this for like two hours so let's get to it
Okay, so we are fully assembled and I'm I'm kind of an idiot and I, I just realized this bed is like way shifted over so I'm gonna have to center it better but let's just do a power on test so assembly took me uh, over an hour because I'm an idiot and several times I didn't really look at the instructions only to realize I need to take something apart to get a nut in before I actually screwed things down so whatever it's done you will need a pair of calipers to, uh, you have to line the back edge of the sidearms 46 millimeters from like the back of the, um, the V slot, the end of that. So you will have to do that to prevent it from binding and to make sure everything turns properly. Obviously I'm going to have to fix this bed. It's, uh, asymmetrical right now, but anyway, that actually probably won't really affect too much. Anyway, uh... I plugged it into power. We have a green light, which is good. So let's do a power on test. I did notice this controller that it comes with has an ESP32, which means it has wireless. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's using the wireless, but it's using it as a CPU. I can see it right here in the top. And it, interestingly enough, has its own 12 volt input. And yeah, and a, uh, it comes with a micro SD card. Uh, 128 megabytes, which is honestly good enough for this. Not going to need a massive car. But anywho, let's uh, do a smoke test. So I heard a beep. I see it says uh, it had the logo. And it says, please be sure to disconnect USB. Because the onboard USB and this both use a serial port. So there'll be a bus contention if you have both plugged in at once. So we have control, file, settings, and about. Let's go into control and see if we can jog the axes. So Z axis seems fine. Okay, now let's try Y. Okay, now X. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have no idea how. A spin, I guess, to turn on the uh, drill. Yep, so electrically she works. Uh, not sure how to exit out of this menu. Maybe press and hold, yeah, press and hold the escape button, the step button, so yeah. So electrically, she works. Uh, good enough for tonight. I'm tired. I just got home from work to do all this. So I'll fix the bed and then probably call it a night. But I will see you guys in a second for you guys. It'll be probably a couple days for me because I'm going to need to do this over the weekend, get all the software set up, and let's run a test cut. I think that would be pretty fun. So I'll see you guys in a sec.
Okay, test two with this five and a half millimeter acrylic. I pretty drastically underestimated how much clamping force you need. So it actually slipped and then moved the last time. So I really cranked on these. Uh, so it should be pretty good. I faced a board underneath it, but it's not quite level because I didn't face the entire board because I can't get anywhere near these clamps. I don't want to because it's probably going to head crash into one of the clamps I, I 3D printed. Anywho, it's going to be good enough. Uh, I'm going to run this. I just kind of leveled it by eye. I don't have any uh, end stops or anything like that. So we're just going to let it rip. I'm just going to go into file and then it's a 20 millimeter test piece. And uh, yeah, hopefully this works. Finger on the escape key just in case something goes wrong. Safety glass is on, by the way. <laughs> uh, let me vacuum all this up. Yeah. Okay, so let's check it out. <laughs> Top onesie failure. Uh, bottom one is a little more successful, but still not great. Looks like, especially towards the end, it was more, less cutting the uh, plastic and more melting it away. Especially you can kind of see through the back there. I think all of the, um, the tabs are supposed to look like this top one here, but uh, you could see it kind of pushed the plastic inwards instead of cutting it out of the way and it melted it. And so there's like a little bump here on the bottom now. Uh, Honestly, yeah. So I think uh, what I should have done is uh, definitely decrease uh, the uh, like Z feed rate. Uh, maybe 0.1 per plunge or something. I don't know. This is actually quite thick to be cutting. It seemed to be doing a lot better when it first started than when it got towards the end. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, not perfect, but uh, it's, it's, it's a starting place, certainly. Yeah. So it didn't damage the bit or anything. Uh, it looks like actually nothing got melted to the bit. It looks just fine. Uh, this is turned off, by the way. I wouldn't put my hands near this while it was on, but yeah. So overall, uh, not a horrible first experience cutting like uh, acrylics, uh, but definitely going to need to work on uh, the recipe, so to speak. Okay, and looking a bit closer to it, uh, this side was the top. You can still see some of the uh, tabs I didn't quite sand perfectly away but yeah you could see like the first plunge was actually really good and then it sort of diverges after that so you can kind of see like there's that lip there where it started getting all wonky and I don't know if that's just because I didn't clamp it quite enough or probably more likely than not the uh the actual tool head is is um uh, is deflecting under the forces of the cut so yeah this this might be Probably what would help that would be to decrease the uh, the plunge rate, but yeah, uh, this machine isn't super sturdy, so probably this is uh, five and a half mil might be a bit too thick. So I might stick with cutting like three mil uh, materials, and that hopefully would be fine. I can take uh, more like take my time, do slower cuts in that case, and uh, hopefully get better surface quality along the edges. But yeah, uh, it was a first try, first time doing this, so. It's not great, but it's not horrible either. Probably better than I could cut by hand with a hacksaw, especially given how thick this material is.